This tutorial will explain the steps to create a post in WordPress. I will use the website middlepatent.org as an example. Your site may look different, but the basic steps to create a post are similar for most sites. There are two methods to get text and images into WordPress sites. Pages are the method for producing information that is of a more permanent nature. That is not to say the text and images can't be edited or even deleted to go with future usage. Pages are the About Us pages, the Contact Us pages, Privacy Policy pages, or pages that contain service forms and so on. Posting pages will be a future tutorial, but this tutorial will cover a lot of techniques that can still be used for pages. Posts are the temporary texts that are important for short times such as news items, human interest stories, elections and election returns, who is coming to town, event notices, etc. We will be dealing with this type of material here. We begin by logging into our admin section of the website by adding backslash WP admin backslash to our website's URL up here. In our case, the full URL will be www.middlepatent.org backslash WP hyphen admin backslash. We can also get to the admin area by clicking on the login in the footer area here. Once the login comes up, enter your password and username to be logged in. Click the login button. Once logged into the admin section, we are in the admin dashboard. To create posts, you need to be an administrator, editor, or author user and logged in. Subscriber users cannot create posts. To create a new post, we move to the left side of the dashboard and go down to the menu item labeled posts. Once you select posts, it will open submenus, all posts, Add new, which means add new post, categories, and tags. Categories and tags will be discussed in detail later on. Select add new to create a new post. That's right here, add new. The add new post screen will open. The box at the top is where you enter the title of your post. I'm going to write a story about St. Mary's Church, so I'm going to enter St. Mary's Church in the title box. After you enter the title of the post, you can drop down to the text edit box, which is located right here. This is where we add text, format the text, add images. We click in the box below the small icons up here and select where we want to enter our text. I will paste some text in that I previously copied to save time. I prefer to write my copy ahead of time and edit it in text edit for the Mac or Notepad for PC, rather than the obvious choice of MS Microsoft Word, because Word can have a tendency to add strange, unwanted formatting to the text that is later difficult to remove. A plain, simple text editor program is the best bet. I have added my text from the text edit file. Now I can modify that text by using the smile icons I mentioned uh, earlier. For instance, if you wanted to bold a uh, piece of text, we highlight the text and select the B icon for bold. Okay, we can make the text into a list with bullets by clicking on this icon. Or if we want a numbered list, we click on this icon. We can also do it in Roman numerals, like so, use alphabet. So that's how we would do the list. Click on the icon again, and then the formatting is taken away. Let's say we wanted to create a length for the word Thanksgiving. We highlight the word, go up to the link icon, click on it, and then we type in the URL, including the HTTP colon backslash backslash designate that starts off the uh, uh, URL. So you want the full 
internet URL, like so. Don't do not do the www, etc. and I think you're shortcutting it. Then you can also add a title. We'll call it Thanksgiving link. And that's for use for the search engine bots or site impaired readers that need to have the site read to them through a voice, text voice reader. Finally, be sure to check the open link in a new window tab. What that'll do is open the link in a separate browser window, leaving our website intact for visitors to easily find it after closing out of the link window. I'll demonstrate how this works later on. Then click on the Add Link button, and you've got a link. Notice it's underlined and colored blue like typical links are. If you want to get rid of the link, highlight it, go up here, and this is the Remove Link button. Click on it, and there's no longer a link there. I got rid of that last thing that I did, I undid it. So we do still have our link with the blue text. You can pick font families from uh, this box. These are fonts that are available on the internet on your computer. In the paragraph, you can add stylings for paragraphs, uh, which are normally, you don't need to worry about it because this formatting is automatically built into the programming. But there may be times you may need it. Also, you can set the style for headings. You've got heading one and heading two are the most important headings to use. Google tends to place the most emphasis on uh, heading one and two in their search result pages. Heading one is the style for the title of your post and is already assigned once you write the title in the title box. Heading two can be used for subheads within the story itself. The remaining headlines diminish in size and in Google search values, so don't really want to use them. At this point, I'd like to make the word history a subhead in the story and style it with a heading to styling. So I go up here to paragraph, heading two. Font sizes are for making the sizes of the type big. The other two items in the same area up here are the text color icon. Say we wanted to make the history subhead a color, we could come in here, click on the A with the underline on it, select a color, and then the word history would be in that color. I'm going to undo that for the purposes of our story. The dash line up here indicates a horizontal line. Let's say after the first paragraph, we want to enter a horizontal rule. We click where in the text we want the dash to appear, and then we click on the dashed line, and there's our horizontal rule. I'm going to undo that because we don't want a horizontal rule there. We can also do a number of other formatting and textual procedures by using these small icons. They each have tool tips built into them. There's a little black box that comes up that spells out what the different icon will do. So feel free to experiment with them to gain a better understanding of what they do. Next, we want to add images. The way we do that is to use our cursor to click on the spot in the text where we want the image to appear. So for instance here, right above the word history, we, so we click right before history and go up to the Add Media button and click on the Add Media button. There are two ways to add media. First is to upload files, which is up here, and I'll demonstrate that later on. The second method is to select an image from the media library. This is the screen with all the small thumbnails in here. These are all the photos associated with the middlepatent.org site. Since we're dealing with St. Mary's Church, we want to choose a photo from the library showing the church. When we click on the photo, over here on the right, we get a section that gives details on the image itself. The title of the image is church.jpg. The date it was created was October 17, 2014. It's 153 kilobytes in size, file size. 
The image is 960 pixels wide by 368 pixels high. We could edit the image if we wanted, but we don't need to do that for now. We can also delete the image permanently through this link. Anything we do on the internet, we can change, modify it, or delete it. And this is the way we delete this particular image out of the image library. So nothing is set in stone forever. We obviously don't want to delete it now. The URL here is the URL for the location of the photo's uh, location within the middle patent org file system. Title just identifies the photo. The caption, when filled in, will provide a caption for the photo in the post. And I put in a caption of St. Mary's Church sits in a peaceful woodland setting. The alt text is again for the text readers to identify the photo rather than just saying photo. This is important for text readers like search engine bots and voice readers for sight impaired persons. After that, you can specify the alignment of the image within the post. Left puts the image to the left and moves text around it to the right. Center will center the photo on its own line and has no text around it either left or right. Right will place the photo to the right and run text around to the left. And of course, no formatting means none, but I think it will automatically probably give you what looks like center. The link to box right here gives us a choice of what we can link the photo to, either a media file attachment page or a URL of some item located on the web, or again, none. I usually prefer none. The size of the box allows you to specify whether the photo is used full size or as a thumbnail. I'm going to use full size. Finally, we click on the insert into post button down at the bottom here, and the photo will be added to the text, like so. To see how the image will look in the actual post on the internet, we click on the preview link right up here in the publish box. Now I'm going to discuss the publish box in more detail later on, but for the purposes of time we're going to click here. So preview and the page will now appear as it would when posted on the internet. But the important thing to bear in mind is that at this point it is still just a preview. It has not been published to the internet yet. Preview allows us to periodically check our layout to make sure it conforms to our intent. And this is the end of lecture part one. Part two continues some more of our discussion.